Another odd bit of kit for teardown today. Uh, this is an atomic absorption spectrometer. Uh, basically what this does is you take a sample of material uh, in a liquid form and it mixes it, it uh, basically mixes it with uh, fuel and uh, air and burns it and then uh, it passes a light uh, from a lamp which uh, over here which is missing unfortunately passes the light through the sample. Uh, molecules in the uh, sample absorb uh, some uh, wavelengths of light from that and then it goes into a detector of some sort. And this is used for uh, analyzing the chemical makeup of, uh, of the sample. Certain different molecules have different, uh, absorb different spectral lines. It looks like this may have a monochromator in it because it has this wavelength control and uh, slit control. That's basically a device that uh, takes an input, light input, and separates out only a certain narrow wavelength. So it'll be interesting to see uh, how that's built inside of it. These control, this control feels really, really nice. Like better than the best uh, multimeter knobs. And this also has a pretty nice feel to it. Oh, by the way, I'm using a lapel mic now, so if you hear any difference in sound, uh, that's probably why. This does seem to power on, although I have no idea how to operate the controls at all. You can seem to type numbers and they come up on the keypa keypad. These buttons don't seem to do anything. This makes it go crazy. <laughs> Signal, lamp 2, 1, absolute, some modes, recorder, gain control, and I guess power controls for the uh, for the lamps. These are the fuel controls, a fuel and oxidizer valve. Looks like it supports uh, both air and nitrous oxide as oxidizers with uh, acetylene as the fuel. And in the center, the, uh, I don't know what this thing is called, the burner. Uh, there's little two controls, this one moves it uh, forward and back. This one moves it up and down. There's this one controls the angle. Uh, not sure why they've tied this thing in there so tightly. I guess they don't want people running off with it. And there's a little, uh, looks like there's a glow plug in there for uh, to ignite the fuel. Fuel and oxidizer input uh, here, just some hoses and a whole bunch of different uh, inputs on this terminal block. Took a few tries, but I figured out what screws have to be taken off to get the cover to flip open. Not much on this side, just the lamp mount. Uh, these knobs felt a bit funny when I uh, looked at them, and it turns out... The knobs! They do nothing! <laughs> They're just uh, bolted on there. Some nice mechanisms here. This is the uh, wavelength adjustment. This is the cable going back to the uh, slit width control. Looks like the light just comes from the uh, from the chamber here, off a mirror, off another tiny mirror in there, and then into the uh, monochromator. And what's this thing? Is, uh, I wonder if this is the t detector. Oh, it's a vacuum tube. R four four six. Yeah, it must be some sort of photomultiplier or photosensor tube. Hamamatsu, Japan. I wonder what's in this box or bag. Uh, let's see. Little rubber thing and a tag. Warning: This instrument is equipped with a locking device to secure the wavelength mechanism against damage during shipment. To read instructions, instructions before touching these controls. So this must be something that. Uh, Stop something from vibrating around inside the monochromator. Let's take a look at this. And not much there. Basically what this is, there's a slit on this side. Light bounces off this mirror, off this diffraction grating mirror combo, where it's split up into the, the reflection angle depends on the wavelength, and then back uh, across through the mirror, then to another slit. You can see the really fine slits. Uh, the middle is adjustable to wider slits because uh, the, there's not, not much light gets through this. A small amount gets through the first slit, has to go through the entire optical system and back, and then through another tiny slit, so most of the light is lost. That's, what, that's why they need such a sensitive uh, vacuum tube detector. If I turn the control, it just moves like that. And if I turn the wavelength uh, control, 
You should be able to see it move very, very slightly. Looks like this has a range from about down to 200 nanometers up to about, uh, let's see, 800 and just about 900 nanometers where it hits, where it, uh, hits a stop. Well, I'm not sure if the, uh, this will actually go that far with the lid on. This is uh, quite close to the edge there. And I think they've actually gr might have ground this uh, mirror to have so it would clear the lid. On the bottom of this, this uh, chain drive just turns a lead screw that drives the uh, this little stage thing back and forth. And that pushes an arm, this arm that moves the uh, grating. And for the vacuum tube, there's just two connections. There's uh, one coax and one uh, uh, just regular wire. On the plumbing side here, we have, uh, looks like a regulator for the uh, air input and just a couple of valves in the flow meters. Uh, there's a switch on one of these, uh, on this control. It looks like this igniter just consists of a uh, glow plug and then a little uh, jet of fuel coming out of this tube. There's, the fuel jets over the glow plug, ignites it, and the flame goes across and lights the main burner. That's, probably, that's the solenoid valve that uh, controls that. And on this side, we have a lot of old school electronics. Uh, it looks like this whole front panel thing will pull out, so I'll probably do that so we can see it easier. Ah, oh, beautiful. Don't you just wish today's electronics serviced this easily? <laughs> lots of old school construction in the electronics module. Uh, lots of wire bundles. Uh, fortunately, not, this is not old enough to uh, have cable lacing. It's all uh, zip ties, pretty much. Uh, old ribbon cable. Let's see, two main boards on a riser boards on a main board. And there's another one uh, for the keypad. Uh, this one is the digital board. It has a whole bunch of uh, Rockwell ICs. 10660ED, 10788CA, 10932EE, and some others. And I can't uh, find any information uh, about these online. All I can find is they're made by Rockwell. Given that it says it's the digital board, these are probably, these four probably form the uh, CPU and associated circuitry f to run this thing. It's also a, uh, this is a 10-bit uh, DAC, 0 to 10 volt output. I find that a bit strange. I'd expect this to have an ADC rather than a DAC because it's taking in the uh, output from that, uh, that IC, or that IC, the uh, sensor, vacuum tube sensor. There's just some power supply stuff on this side, some uh, analog logic, digital uh, analog stuff, digital logic. Uh, and this part, uh, 3814DC is a uh, Fairchild uh, multimeter, uh, basically a multimeter on a chip, and that must be what's providing the uh, ADC on this. That's a bit odd. I would have expected a discrete ADC, not a whole multimeter on chip to do this. It's a bit odd because this large package has so few pins actually connected uh, to anything. And this FSA 2719M is another part that I can't find any information on. Uh, this seems to be connected up to whole bunch of opto-isolators. Let's see what's inside this DAC. There's the inside of the DAC. Uh, numerous small dies and two uh, bigger dies and one filter cap. And notice some nice uh, star point grounding near the top left. I'm thinking the 12 anal or, uh, digital inputs are on the bottom of this, then there's three, four input buffers, and the center die is probably something like an R2R ladder to, to actually produce the uh, digital analog converter. And there's probably some sort of a buffer or op-amp uh, after that. That center chip looks like it has some sort of laser trimming marks or something. This other board looks to be just a driver for the photomultiplier tube. Um, on this side we have some power supplies. I think this section here is the high voltage power supply for the uh, photomultiplier, which needs something like negative one kilovolt. Uh, I think this is the 
high voltage winding on the transformer because I don't see any sort of switching power supply here. A few 2 kilovolt diodes and a 1.6 kilovolt uh, filter cap. I think what they're doing is basically just feeding the uh, photomultiplier with, through a resistor and having a transistor pull the uh, voltage down to regulate it because I think the, the gain of the photomultiplier is affected by the uh, high voltage so that has to be regulated accurately. The input from the tube is under this shielded can. There's a, uh, there's a CA3140 op amp, that's uh, 4.5 megahertz fed inputs. Uh, yeah, the shielding, I think this might be, yeah, this is a connector for the uh, connection to the tube. That's just this coax and the high voltage lead run off to the tube. Some more power supplies up here. A bunch of 4000 series logic, like AND, NAND gates, NOR gates. Not sure what that's for. There's a LM339. Yeah, not too much in this system. It's pretty simple. This is basically the circuit they have going on here to generate the high voltage. You see the transformer, rectifier, and cap to provide some high negative voltages, let's just say 1200 volts, minus 1200 volts, pass a, res a resistor and a transistor that will uh, draw current to reduce the uh, output voltage with a feedback loop from a series of resistors. That's a pretty simple way of generating a uh, high voltage regulated supply with it for a, something that doesn't draw much current. Actually, I just realized I had that transistor drawn the wrong way. This is the uh, correct one, a PNP transistor. Here's the keypad board. Uh, not too much on this. Uh, just some driver circuits for the uh, LED displays. All these LEDs. Uh, looks like these transistors probably uh, they have traces running over to the uh, displays themselves. So these are probably t discrete display drivers. More of them up here probably for these LEDs. A uh, nice ceramic package chip there. Some linear LED arrays. Might be useful. Yeah, not too much. This is pretty simple, not really that interesting. And the sheet metal work on this is just beautiful. You would never don't see any seams in this. The corners are all rounded perfectly. You can tell they've uh, well, they just bent this and welded it. There's a seam here, completely invisible from the outside. I wish they'd build things that nicely, that nice, that uh, nicely these days. And this looks like just PCB material routed out for the uh, cover for the back of the screen. I was able to get the burner running. I've connected up to uh, propane and air. So let's ignite the fuel. There we go. Now we can add the oxygen air. I think there's a lot of space in this chamber, so right now it's just pushing fuel out. We turn it up. Eventually the air will come through. There we go. There we go. It's operating pretty nicely now. Maybe. I think I'm thinking about it. These uh, cables that secure this uh, burner piece are probably to prevent the burner from flying off should the fuel air mixture inside this part ex part explode, because with acetylene and air, it's extremely volatile. Yeah, I can imagine before that these burners would go flying up and hit the ceiling if that if that were to uh, fuel were to combust inside. Too bad we don't have the nebulizer. That's the thing that goes in here that mixes the. Uh, sample with air before injecting it into the uh, uh, in, into there for combustion. <laughs> Notice some interesting effects if I turn the airflow up too high. Let me just get the microphone in there. Oscillations in the flame. Anybody up for some atomic absorption hot dogs? I hope you found that atomic absorption spectrometer and cooker video interesting. Thanks for watching.